I'm here in Kuldiga in Latvia and this behind me is the longest waterfall in Europe, over 200 meters. I've got a pretty good vantage point. I can see that there are fish trying to jump up the waterfall. So let's get a bit closer, get a clearer look. How exciting, we found it. This is a beaver dam, I think. There are beavers living in there. Oh, little beaver, little beaver house. We found it. I nearly didn't come to Kuldiga because it's just one thing, it's just a waterfall to make a stop and stay here for a night. I thought, eh, it's just a waterfall. But I'm actually glad that we did because this is awesome. And also I did not realize that the season that the fish would be jumping. So that's quite cool to see. So quite a nice, small, short stop in Kuldiga. I think it was worth it, just one day. It was a nice little place. I feel a little bit like I'm in an episode of Country File. I mean, look at this. Roll the ending credits over this. It's not very often in life that I find things that are on my level. I normally have to put up with, eh, it's good enough, it'll do. But this, this is on my level. So while the kettle boils to fill my stein of tea, I will fill you in on what this video is going to be about. I have moved eastwards, still in Latvia, but we're in a place called Kemeru National Park. So we're in the grounds of a huge park and the main attraction here, the reason I'm here, is it has quite a unique boardwalk which goes over a bog. And a lot of these types of bogs in Europe have been exploited because the land is very fertile for farming so a lot of them aren't around anymore but there's one a protected one here in Latvia in the National Park and we're here and it has a unique boardwalk so you can walk through literally through the bog but without getting wet and that's the reason I'm here this place costs 18 euros a night to stay and I booked expecting it to be like a standard issue hostel because I thought 18 euros it's a little bit on the pricey side, but we are in a national park, so I thought it's gonna cost a bit more. It's a bit like staying in a hostel in the Lake District. It's, you expect it to cost a bit more because there's less of them. But then I got here and I'm treated to some like center parks level of accommodation. I'm the only person staying in the whole complex. Like I've walked around and it is empty. This place is nice. Got this restaurant area, no one here. Kids area, I could play with the Lego. Oh, it's a Rowlet. This is my week sorted. This whole place is so nice. And I'm the only person staying here. Oh, European glamour, might take that for later. Ah, kettle's done. <laughs> Uh, not enough water! <laughs> Included in the accommodation is a bike and I have not ridden a bike since I sold my poor bike. The sacrifices I had to make to go travelling. So I am so excited to ride a bike. Yes. Not the safest structure I've ever been in. You can see the old structure lines where the steel girders were and it looks like someone has just built this improv and it's just supported by three of these beams going into the old girder holes and also pretty much the whole structure 
is held up by these two planks here. All around Latvia you find signs of a Russian empire that never quite was and it looks like they had big plans in this area. These look like supports for a potential bridge and you can see them going all the way through the forest getting taller and taller. I suppose when these were constructed the forest wasn't here at all. Maybe this was all flattened out ready to be some sort of super highway and it just never came to be. We did it team, Kameri Bog Trail, this way. It's really not that far from the town of Kameri, which is just back there. Really small town, not a lot going on. So we're mainly here for this stuff, the nature stuff. When you start traveling, it's super easy to get new experiences and to see new things because you've not seen much. But I've been to a few places now and the occasions when I'm actually seeing like brand new environments are getting less and less and this is one of those occasions because I've never seen a huge natural untouched bog environment before. So let's go! This is it! The start of the bog walkway and it looks amazing already. It's strange because at first glance and from a distance it just looks like a normal field but then when you look closer you realise that actually it's mostly moss and some patches you can actually see the water seeping up through the ground. Most of this you actually wouldn't be able to walk on. They've got some really useful little information signposts along the way. So I'm learning a lot about bogs, which I never thought I would. Apparently they're like big sponges in the landscape and they help prevent a lot of flooding in Latvia because all the water just gets soaked up. This just looks like a field, but if you tried to walk on that, that you go under. Also there were some tanks that were eaten by bogs in World War II. This is meant to be two stories deep. This is as deep as a house which kind of makes walking on this precarious little bit of wood a bit scarier. It looks like a nice peaceful stroll but when you find out that down there is a two-story drop suddenly <laughs> it's not quite as peaceful. I am astounded and just completely, completely exceeded expectations. This is something that I did just because it was here. I thought, oh, I'm in Latvia, I'll, 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 see, I'll see what is unique and this came up and I thought, I'll do it while I'm here. But honestly, I have been blown away by this whole area just absolutely astounding the sun is now setting i've spent about seven hours in this bog i think it's so so vast so huge and it's amazing just to be immersed in the wildlife all you can really hear is birds and creatures and all you can see for miles and miles is just this the trees and the bogs and it just has this sense of timelessness this massiveness that just goes 
beyond all of us. This place is 9,000 years old. With places like this and really big wildlife areas, it's just so easy to get caught up in the fact that if you came here in Victorian times, it would have looked the same, other than the, the boardwalk, obviously. But the concept of this kind of area, this is the world that cavemen knew. This is the world that dinosaurs knew. It's just, it's timeless, you know? And if it continues to be protected, then the people of the future, this is what they will know as well. And that is such a rare thing in the world to find something that it, it just, I don't know, it just, it, it kind of blows my mind. I don't know if, if I'm making any sense. It's such a random place and is not really somewhere that everyone says, oh, you have to go, you have to visit the bogs of Latvia. But honestly, this has left me as awestruck and as amazed as the pyramids. This is the same sort of feeling of like, wow, the vastness and the hugeness of, of where I am. It should be up there, it should be up there. It's honestly one of my favorite places one of the most amazing things I've ever seen and I've never heard of it. I've never, I just didn't know it was a thing. Just horrifically underrated. And it's free, it's free as well. A lot of it is EU funded, which, which I guess helps. I don't know, have I recommended it enough? Have I sold it enough? Pfft, don't know what more there is to say about this place, just astounding. We're now coming to the end of the boardwalk, back in the forest. We've got a little walk through. I have to try and remember where I hid the bike. It's somewhere out here. <laughs> Didn't really think this through, I just remember that it was near a tree and I don't know how much help that is. As if this national park wasn't perfect enough, it also has a beach. And yeah, I can ride on sand because I'm level 100 in biking. Oh my gosh, look at that sunset. Woo. This place is literally perfect. Ocean, sunset, forest, and it's all right next to each other. It's, it's just so perfect. This, this, this right here, this is the dream, this is why I left home. When I left home, I had a section of my bucket list that I wanted to complete on this trip. It wasn't the whole bucket list because I've got stuff that I want to do in the US and in East Asia, which I obviously knew I wasn't gonna get to do this time. And I'm five months into traveling now and I actually completed everything on that section of the bucket list in the first three months. But there's one thing that I didn't complete yet off that section of the bucket list and that is see a perfect uninterrupted clear starry night with no light pollution and i really thought i would get this in one of my desert trips that i did earlier on in the year but every time that i've been in the desert and it's been nighttime it's either been raining cloudy the only time it wasn't rainy or cloudy it was a full moon <laughs> So it was too bright to see the stars. And then everywhere else I've been, there's been a degree of light pollution. You could say that the stars hadn't quite aligned. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm pleased with that. Wait for the sun to set once that goes down and it gets completely dark. I'm gonna tick that off and the bucket list for this trip will be done. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you have, like me, found something new in the world that is well worth it and very underrated. Do subscribe because the journey is not quite over yet. More videos still to come. Travel vlogs every single Tuesday right here on this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon.